Hey folks, here are OS Reviews. You're watching our retro throwback of the Samsung SPH i500. This is one of the earliest uh, Samsung smartphones to be released on the market, and it actually ran on the Palm OS operating system as opposed to you know, Windows Mobile, which I originally thought was the earliest OS that uh, Samsung released in the form of a phone. But uh, I was wrong, and this actually was a combination between you know, a regular PDA, which you might find released by Palm that you could use to sync a your calendars with, as well as appointments and check emails with a regular cell phone that you can use to place calls with. But the most fascinating thing about the i500 is it's also a flip phone. And I actually thought that there were very few flip phones which were also smartphones. And one of the most memorable smartphone, smartphone, flip phone combinations would be the HTC StarTech Communicator, and that was a phone that still retained the stylish form factor of something like the Motorola Razr. Of course, the i500 precedes the Razr by about three to four years, so it, it's a, a giant by today's standards, but it's still very fascinating due to that form factor as well as design. It does have a resistive touchscreen that we'll talk about a little bit uh, later on in this uh, retro look back. So taking a quick look at the hardware first, on the very back there's that antenna, which is uh, protruding out along with the lanyard port. It says that's a palm pack. Power. This is a CDMA phone, so it can only work in the States, along with a Verizon or Sprint, unfortunately, and this is a battery. This is actually the extended battery pack, which protrudes slightly from the back of the phone. Uh, you can swap this out, of course, if you wanted to get a smaller battery pack that was a bit more elegant on travel space. The back also featured a mono speaker for your uh, for playing back some music, as well as sound. And over here, there is that uh, stylus, which can be pulled out. It's a telescopic uh, stylus, which actually has a hinge. It's made completely out of of aluminum and it actually feels pretty good. You can use this to access the graffiti area which is a handwriting recognition software built onto all Palm OS uh, devices and you use this for input if you didn't want to use a T9 style keyboard for texting as well as dialing. Otherwise in the sides here there's access to a volume control, there's also dedicated controls for launching hotkeys and Palm OS, a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack as opposed to full 3.5 millimeters, and a proprietary Samsung charging port which was uh, fairly common back in the day. The other other side features access to directly launching into the call log as well as your, your phone book and again on the very top there's also an IR beaming port which allows you to beam information using infrared back and forth between compatible Palm OS products so it was a kind of like a very early version of NFC between phones but you didn't exactly need to tap to share that information so kind of cool in that sense. Notably uh, missing from the i500 is an uh, external display so you're not going to find this here and again this thing is more than a decade old so extremely old by smartphone standards and you know something that I only recently realized existed so I wanted to take a quick look back at. There's also a bit of information and branding by some of the carriers you can see on the front along with that Samsung logo. So flipping things open you can see that the hinge opens up at this uh, rather awkward angle. It doesn't flip all the way open but uh, you can see there that the phone does get a little bit slimmer at least the illusion does and there's a fairly generously sized screen on the very top as far as an early phone goes and this is a TFT resistive, it's an LCD screen that's uh, touch sensitive and uh, it basically runs on Palm OS. So if you've ever seen or used a Palm PDA, it'll be right at home. It just has that extra phone functionality. There isn't built-in additions like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, so you're basically stuck with uh, just your, your, your data connectivity for calling as well as accessing very limited internet services, but uh, it did work. Um, and the, the screen itself did have decent viewing angles. Below here, there's access to hotkeys to go into the browser again. There's access to checking out your mail, to go into the dialer pad, as well as your calendar. So those were pretty standard and easy to tap on. Down below here, this is where things get interesting. Below the Samsung logo, there's access to that graffiti uh, area. Again, this is something that you'll typically only find on Palm OS PDAs. And because again, it's running on Palm OS, just like those trios that uh, were released later on, in fact, this allows you to then use handwriting recognition to write out things like over here you write A, B, C, and then over here you write numbers to quickly get that uh, out. You can of course use a virtual keyboard which was absolutely tiny or you could use the keypad which actually was the best bet at the time. If you wanted to launch the virtual keypad you tapped on the letters in the sides there to access that and bring that up. There's also little controls in the sides for contrast and brightness for the screen that you tapped on and there's also quick launch shortcuts to the calendar, to the search application, to the home screen, and to the drag down drawers in the top to search through 
through all of your apps as well as uh, by name and by category. Down below here, there's access to talk and end keys. There's also a scroll key that goes up and down between menus and programs. This is dubbed as a power key as well. And there is a standard T9 layout for the keypad, which is pretty tactile and responsive. And since the phone itself is wider than you would normally expect a flip phone to be, this is next to an iPod Touch fourth generation model. You can really see the difference in size there. Um, the keys are actually fairly spacious, despite not being super risen above the surface. They are fairly easy to text and dial by feel. So uh, pretty good as far as a phone goes. So phone call quality was actually pretty decent. It's really just this very funky form factor that uh, really is uh, interesting and unique about the i500 flip phone smartphone from Samsung. So anyways, as far as the processing and guts, extremely low powered, but that's because Palm OS required a very you know, little processing package to work at the time. And I recall, you know, one of the earliest PDAs I checked out was the Sony Cli A, which had a 33 megahertz processor and you know, two megabytes of RAM. And that's the same thing that you'll find here. So um, you are limited to some you know, very basic, maybe 8-bit games that you can download like Snake. Uh, of course, there are more catalogs that you can find through a computer and then connect using the cable onto a computer and drag and drop software that way there wasn't a collective app store but you know there was a few options that you can go through and there were also options for editing word excel documents on board as well which is quite useful when you're on the go um, and again checking out the web for here and there in an era where you know internet access on smartphones and you know flip phones were still rare so anyways this is an interesting retro look back at the hardware of the samsung sph i500 a unique Palm OS smartphone released by Samsung that also featured a flip phone form factor. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.